All right, Hans, thanks for uh, thanks for joining me today, and we'll get straight into the, the questions here. And I guess I think the question most people would have is the events that we read about in the book transpired you know, 30 years ago. Uh, what are you doing with your life now? Well, um, uh, back then I was a programmer in, in addition to being a uh, well, early uh, network user. Uh, and um, uh, I made that my profession, so I'm, I'm, I'm working in, in healthcare data processing now, but I've done a lot of different programming jobs. So that was what I was, what I was doing back then, and it's doing what I do now. Okay. Even though I have a a a full color now, so <laughs> yeah. Now, do you? I mean, we read about you and, and a few other folks uh, right at the end of the book. I mean, in folks like like Marcus and, and Peter and Dirk. Have you kept in contact with any of those folks? Well, uh, um, as you know, uh, Carl is dead, and uh, he was he was basically my friend in the group and the rest were just the other people um, and then both Carl and myself going uh, were going to the to 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 confess to the to the authorities so uh, from the perspective of the rest of the group uh, we, uh, we we were mostly traitors so so uh, there was no, no not much love left after after we had spoken so I can say yeah. no Okay, I, under, I understand. Um, so I, I guess the thing I want to talk about here, and I, I'm I'm not a reporter, like I'm not necessarily, you know, trying to dig out details of a, of a story, but I, I'm interested in this from an educational perspective because that's really the purpose of my class here. And things are, in some ways, I feel like very different now than they were back then for security, but in a lot of ways they're the same. Um, not not maybe as much as changes we would have liked from back then from a defensive perspective. And I guess in the book there are all of these different details discussed about people breaking into these networks and Cliff is of course observing this. Um, at one point it kind of uh, alludes to the fact that most of what was being observed was, was probably related to, to Marcus, um, but then later in the book it kind of alludes to that it may have been any any number of, of the five people mentioned um, there. And so, so regardless of what part you had in that or, or didn't have in that, you know, you were obviously involved in security and, and there's accessing systems and things like that. When you were accessing any of these systems or any systems at all, how aware were you of the fact that you might be being watched? Is that something you thought about at any point? Well, um, certainly so to some extent, but um, from the perspective of being, uh, being a hacker um, uh, in systems, um, you can never really be sure whether you are uh, watched or not watched, and 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 um, one of the one of the thought lines, of course, was okay. They are watching us, and they are they are really making fun of us, because uh, um, even though we thought we would be uh, a kind of kind of unique in what we did back then. Um, we also considered that we might not be that brilliant and, uh, and we might be just the, the object of study of some people who would be much more sophisticated than we could ever have been. So, so um, and, and from the, from, well, we didn't know whether we were looked at because nobody really was actively telling us they were looking at us. Now, in terms of, of the security re related work, I mean, obviously you said it yourself, you considered security to be kind of one of your areas of interest and some of your expertise at that time. Did you, you know, a lot of people nowadays, they want to get into security as a profession. There are, there's a huge market for that. There's lots of opportunity there. Whereas back then there weren't nearly as many dedicated security roles. So I guess the question here is, you started out doing security, but you were also a programmer, and then you kind of, it seems like later in your career, much later, you stuck with programming, but you maybe moved a little bit away from security. Is that, is that accurate? Well, uh, I, I, quite frankly, I uh, was not really ever working in security at all. Um, and uh, uh, the reason was when, when I was starting as a hacker, my, my motivation uh, was not so much breaking security, uh, but but rather getting access to the systems that I that I wanted to access. So so my interest was programming to, to begin with, uh, and the systems that I uh, wanted to access were just too too expensive for me to buy. So 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 that's why I 
became a VEX hacker. That, that was my, my primary field of interest. And um, uh, when, I, when I then, um, well, of course, every, uh, all of your uh, participants know, know the story. Uh, so, but, but, uh, and, and they might think that I'm, I'm telling, telling just a fairy tale here, but, but that was really what motivated me to, um, to do everything that I did back then was to, what I wanted, I wanted a VAX. I wanted a VAX computer, which I couldn't, just couldn't afford. And, and, and that was what, what was driving me. When I, when I stopped hacking, uh, um, uh, I, I just became a, a professional programmer and uh, the two or three security gigs that I have ever had, I did not enjoy so very much. Um, because because I'm, I'm more of a creator type uh, than 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 a uh, investigator type. So from from my how I work yeah, and what that, I that's, that's what I was gonna gonna ask you is is I kind of I mean I've always had you know whether someone goes down a darker path and they're hacking into systems that don't belong to them or whether they're they're doing it for for you know white hat purposes or what have you that most people who are into computers have are generally very creative people and it's just they're looking for outlets for that in, in some ways and it, I mean. From your story, it kind of seems like for a little while that you know hacking into things was part of that outlet, but eventually you just moved that over to programming, and programming gave you a way to to express creativity and express curiosity and all of those things. Is that, is that yeah, right? very much so. Yeah, very much so. Cool. Um, do you think so? So you were doing security, but you're also doing programming, and it's safe to say you started out learning about systems and programming first, and then security was a little bit of a follow-on. Is that right? Uh, well, yes. The thing was that I mean, uh, back then when I when I started with computers, the uh, the the systems that I could um, uh, access at home were were eight bit computers, and um, the they they were just boring uh, when compared to the to the larger system that I could uh, access at a university. So I had some university accounts, and and the whole world that was behind these systems to explore. Uh, that was that was really uh, that was really what what piqued my interest and where I found that that uh, yeah that's that's what I wanted to do and and there were no jobs there I did C programming on Amiga and stuff like that which were really kind of uh, kind of low level things and I wanted to to have the real thing that that was that was what was driving me back then yeah that makes sense now in terms of the, the evolution of the internet over time I mean, the internet was originally designed as this big open sharing network and and security the idea of privacy on on the the internet was you know people were obviously thinking about it and and but it was really in a lot of ways bolted on after the fact so i mean i guess and this is a big question but do you believe people online have the fundamental right to anonymity well, I mean, um, uh, privacy and anonymity uh, really are um, not really the same thing. And I, I would generally think that, from my perspective of how a how a, an online community can work, anonymity is not something that helps creating a a, a safe environment for people to to live in. Uh, and the reason for that, why, why I believe that, is that. Um, uh, in the in the internet, when you when you participate as a person, um, the the um, you you do not exist as a physical thing. So so the rules that apply in the physical world and that also set natural boundaries for what you can do and what you cannot do in a socially acceptable manner, th those things do not exist in the internet uh, per se. So so it is my belief that. Um, mm, Forcing people to take responsibility to who they are in the in the in the network uh, would be a way to improve the the overall um, aspect of how nice the network can be and and it's really a big question so it is probably uh, uh, hard to to explain this in or or get to the bottom of this in in, in a few words but. Um, I do not I do not subscribe to the view that it is a fundamental right to be. Uh, on an anonymous or uh, uh, also that there is a fundamental right uh, to privacy in the network. I don't think that this will ever really work out. Interesting. Okay. That, yeah, that's very interesting. Now, if you um, if you were to encounter, so in, my, in this class, we have a lot of folks, particularly young people who are maybe in uh, 
toward you know seniors in high school or they're in uh, just entering college and they they're interested in careers in security specifically. Based upon your your you know your experience in that area and all the things you went through that we read about in the book, do you have any specific advice or things you would recommend to folks like that who are interested in security based careers? I mean, the one uh, so, so there are uh, I think there are two aspects to network security. One is the the social part, and uh, the social part of uh, hacking uh, is important, and, and it is rightfully stressed. But as soon as you uh, go, uh, as you define hacking or s computer security as having to do something with uh, working with actual systems, I think the the knowledge of how these systems work is required. Uh, uh, and an interest in in how these systems work is required to to uh, really make it make a difference because otherwise if if you don't have that that uh, deep understanding how systems work uh, the the uh, security advice that you can give can only be on the on the social level it, I'm not saying that there that it's totally unimportant it is just that if you have a real adversary uh, who is who is interested in computers. Uh, and trying to break your security, uh, you will need that to have knowledge that is uh, on par with with your adversary. And also, uh, it is right. Uh, I think it is correct to say that um, uh, good, well, computer criminals, hackers, or whatever, also need to have a deep uh, understanding of of the security of the systems themselves to to be successful. So. Uh, it, you, you cannot be good as a as a as a counterpart if you don't if you don't really know what's going on. Yeah, I think that's fantastic advice. Well, um, I guess the the last question I'm going to ask you, and it, it's kind of open ended. You know, we like I said, we've been going through this class over the course of about eight weeks, and we're using the story to kind of introduce old old concepts and connect them to modern concepts. We're focusing mostly on the technology, but of course, people in the class are getting introduced to the book, and it's really through one perspective. It's through Cliff's perspective. Um, is there anything about the book or about what happened immediately after the book ends in that timeline that you have a different perspective to offer or, or just something you want to clear up or anything on your mind that you think would be beneficial to the folks in the class uh, related to your perspective? Well, it is, I, I mean, it is long enough in, in the past to, to not uh, feel intimidated by, by anything that has been written there. Um, for me, or, or for us in general, when we, when we, uh, uh, as German hackers, discussed the book, um, we we always had like the um, uh, the, the line of thought that uh, Cliff wouldn't actually be uh, honest. And 30 days later, I'm I'm not saying that I believe that now. But back then, we, we never really knew, well, well, is this just some someone who has been asked to write that kind of stuff to make the topic more known uh, uh, to more people so that sensitivity in, 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 uh, in terms of security is raised or awareness of computer security is raised? Or is this really a person, the person that he uh, des describes in, as being in his book? Uh, just a curious person who uh, who accidentally uh, 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 stumbles through a, a, a sequence of events and gets in touch with uh, three-letter agencies and so on and so forth without really wanting that, just just because he he found an an, an accounting error. Um, I I think the the book did have a tremendous effect. Uh, on the overall awareness uh, of people uh, regarding computer security, and that was also noticeable here. So, so uh, even if Cliff wasn't really the, the, a, a, um, aware of him being a tool, his his writing had the effect that, um, uh, at least in Germany, um, uh, the the topic became something somewhat more of a, a public interest topic, and the authorities also got more receptive to, um, to, to international inquiries, uh, for example, because German hackers would hacks in, 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 in the US. And, and before the book was written, that was really, really a niche theme. And, and, and what he writes is true. It was impossible to find someone who knows the computer security in the Deutsche Telekom background. It was just not possible. 
So, so it had that effect. I don't, I, I'm, not, I'm not saying that he's an agent. I'm just saying back then we had that thought, of course. Sure. No, that, that, that's interesting. All right. Well, well great. Um, anything, anything else you want to share um, before we, we, we end the interview here? No, I'm, uh, well, uh, there's something small. I, I think, um, uh, uh, or no, may, may, I, I don't want to uh, ask anyone not to go into computer security. I think computer security is very, very important. Um, however, um, uh, it is also a market where, where it's easy to find people selling snake oil. So, so that's, that's something that I, that I, um, that keeps me off that business because I, I know some things, but I don't want to market that because there, there are so many people coming with glorious claims what they can do and then they can do nothing. Yeah, no, I, I completely uh, agree with that for sure. Well, 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 Hans, thanks so much. I, I think, uh, I think the folks who will be watching this are, are really going to enjoy it. So thank you so much for your time. Okay. No problem. Thanks, Chris.